In this video, I'm going to go through what I think are absolutely fantastic starter, foundation, beginning force feedback settings for your Fanatec DD1, Fanatec DD2 or Fanatec Podium direct drive wheelbase. Uh, I use the podium here. These settings are not the best settings you could have for all simulators or maybe any simulator. But what these are, are settings that I put on the wheel when I first jump into a simulator, a new sim, that feel generally car-like and are a great start point where you can set it like that, set the sim up a bit and then maybe twiddle with the wheel afterwards to get the absolute most out of it. But these settings for me always give really nice, somewhat realistic, somewhat informative, happy, DD Girl approved feel from the wheelbase. So without further ado, let's get on with it. If you enjoy our content and you want to help support the channel, use the Gamer Muscle Fanatec affiliate link when buying from the Fanatec store. Link is located in the video description. Thanks for all the tea bags. on with the video. Right here, I'm going to go straight through the settings for those of you that maybe got a DD wheel and you just want it set up and you want to get driving. You don't really want to be watching idiot YouTubers. Of course, you've already clicked the like button and subscribed and hit the bell and all that business. I know that. But uh, you want to get the settings. So we're going to go straight through it and I'm going to try and be as quick as possible in explaining the settings. Uh, you know, I'll try my best. <laughs> I try not to ramble across the Scottish Glens here. Right. Uh, so, first of all, you access the settings menu obviously by pressing the uh, the little settings buttons on your wheel and you can see I've got the webcam pointing at the DD wheelbase screen on the wheelbase you have five profiles that you can save um, you also have Fanalab software that allows you to save more profiles and have it auto load profiles depending on what game or even car that you're driving um, but I, I don't use the Fanalab software I'm perfectly happy with these wheel settings uh, to be honest the five settings for me cover the seven or eight or so sims that I play perfectly fine with very little tweak in between them so first of all the first setting we've got the sensitivity so I set it to 900 you could set it higher you could set it lower it doesn't really matter the main thing is that the sensitivity on the wheelbase matches the sensitivity in game so if you set it to 900 on the wheelbase then set it in the game to 900 or set it on the wheelbase and then do a wheel uh, configuration in whatever game you're doing and what you'll have is that the game is 900 degrees of rotation on the steering wheel and the your DD uh, Fanatec wheelbase is 900 degrees so everything should be one to one that said you know if you are driving and you want the steering to be more sensitive you can once it's all set up you could then change it on the wheel which will make it out of sync and non-linear but that will then make the steering a lot more sensitive if you reduce sensitivity um, or it'll make it less sensitive if you increase the sensitivity again that'll make it non it'll make it so it's not lined up one to one which uh, arguably is a, is a detriment in some ways but you know sometimes you're driving you want to quickly make it more sensitive for whatever reason you can go into that and uh, tweak that uh, and it has the benefit of of really annoying eye races and people watching live streams because they can't cope with something not being one-to-one -one. you do want it one-to-one -one generally that's the best way to do it that does make more sense but you know it's your equipment do whatever you want with it <laughs> so the next setting we got the uh, force feedback and uh, what I'd say if it's your first time using the DD and your first time using a simulator with the DD so a baseline setup I would put this around about 25 to 35 um, and set up the in-game force feedback so it feels quite nice at those uh, at those settings uh, 35 on the on the DD1 and the Fanatec podium I believe is a pretty similar strength to the club sport uh, wheelbase v, v uh, 2.5 um, but obviously smoother because it's a direct drive wheel and a, and a little bit more informative uh, so it's a good starting point for the force feedback strength to have it on 25 to 35 set up in game you should be able to feel everything it will drive perfectly fine um, around about 34 it's, it's probably around about 10 newton meters or so of force maybe seven or eight newton meters of force which is actually going to be pretty similar to a uh, road car power steering that like what they set in a, in a standard road car it's different from road car to road car but you know that's a good basic strength now what i would say aside from that is that 
if you want to get the absolute maximum sort of fidelity and detail out of the simulator, what I have found is if you run the force feedback on a higher setting on the wheelbase, but a lower setting on the game, so you're still feeling the same amount of force feedback, that tends to get you more force feedback detail than if you were to run it lower on the wheelbase and higher in the game. I don't know why that is. Um, that seems to be a, a, a case with the Fanatec DD. Um, it's not when I, I've got a uh, Simucube direct drive wheel, and with that, it doesn't seem to matter if I run it high in the game, low on the wheel. It always seems to feel the same. It seems with the Fanatec DD, it prefers to have it. Um, I don't know, maybe it loads up more power into it or something. Um, but you know, uh, it's going to be up to you how you do it. The, at these, at the 25 to 35, it's perfectly fine. I'm just saying, if you wanted to absolutely max out the sort of snappiness feel of it, then maybe try running it higher on the wheel and then dialing it down in the game. Um, as I say, safety, so no sudden jolts happen, especially if you've got a Formula Rim on it um, and you're just trying a new sim, put it on 34, then even if it goes crazy, you'll be able to hold it with your hands and it, you know, you'll, you'll all be good. Next setting, four speed, oh actually, before next setting, of course, you can dial this up and down as you're driving as well. As long as it's not clipping in the game, you could be driving, you'd be like, oh, I'm not happy, that's too strong, it's too weak. And you can just twiddle and dial it as you drive along, which is really nice, um, really handy. It's one of the big things I like about the Fantech wheel is being able to adjust it all on the fly. Next, next setting here, guys. Force feedback linearity. So what this setting does, as you can see it says on the screen, linearity mode disables max peak torque possible. So what happens is with that is it removes the if you have like sudden jolt so you've got force feedback on pretty high and you have a sudden jolt i don't know you put a wheel on a bit of curbing or there's a big bump in the road and it would normally go really quickly with the dd motor you'd feel a, a jolt that will kind of uh, that, that will get rid of that sort of situation and uh, get rid of those peak forces i think it's much better having it off because those sudden jolts and peak forces are something that um, do happen in real life in a car that doesn't have power steering a, a lot of track day cars. If you watch the onboards, you can see their wheels doing sudden jolts and jerks um, all the time. It's, and reset was back to center, so it's not making you crash. Um, but having that off, I think, gives you a better force feedback feel. I think that's much more preferable for me. So put that off if you want to be like a bold git in the sim rig. Now, NDP, natural dampener. So I actually, by default, have this turned off. Um, if the steering in the game, if the game that you're playing, the simulator you're playing, has really overactive steering, so when you go out of a corner and it's coming back and the, your force feedback seems to be going like, uh, all over the place and you're wrestling with the force feedback um, or the wheel just feels too loose, um, uh, you know, there's no real resistance to it at all, you might want to turn the dampener uh, NDP on. Um, I'd say sort of values between 10 and 25 are uh, often pretty good values to have. Um, again, that's going to be like a subjective thing. Um, I would imagine most people would probably find it feeling pretty natural at around about 20. That would be a good start point, especially if you come from belt-driven wheels or you're used to road cars. Um, a thing to keep in mind with this setting is that some simulators uh, would prefer you to use the dampening settings in the sim rather than on the wheelbase because they have car specific dampener settings so automobilista 2 would be an example of that where you you might want to have a, one car might have a really high dampener because that settles the steering down nicely but there's another kind of game where it would have really low dampener um, and so if you set it on your wheel then your wheel's going to be uh, negating information from the simulator because the, the dampener is too high on your wheel uh, so it's better to use it in the sim Outside of Automobilista 2 and maybe some other sims that I'm not aware of, um, I have found that I generally prefer using the wheel dampener rather than the in-game dampener if I'm going to go for a damp dampener setting. But it's utterly marginal. Um, the advantage, though, of having the wheel dampener setting rather than setting it in the game is that you can, of course, tweak the dampener uh, on the fly on the wheel as you drive and just see how you like it whereas if you do it in the game you probably have to go back to a menu and then back into the game again so put maybe when you're starting out maybe put down like 10 or 20 i have it off uh, at this point in time uh just because i do so uh 
natural friction personally i wouldn't use this at all that would just cause like a constant sort of frictiony feel through the wheel i, I just think that's terrible <laughs> i can't think of any time when you'd really want to have that um it does prevent oscillation but so does the dampener and so does the other settings you know if you've got a lot of oscillation in a given simulator maybe you want to put a bit of uh, natural friction personally i i don't like it um natural inertia i turn that off again it, it adds a sense of inertia it will, when you turn it the wheel will kind of be feel like you're driving through like molasses i guess you could argue it could add a bit of a steering rack feel to it it could add a bit of a power steering type feel to the force feedback personally i turn it off it just adds gloop and uh misinformation to the force feedback I, I don't like it so i'd have that turned off now force feedback interpolation i always set this to either two or three uh, what this does is interpolates force feedback signal from the game it means that you end up with a slightly smoother force feedback rather than with some sims the uh tick rate for the force feedback is a little bit um bumpy if you will so it has it, it has a kind of graininess to it to it it doesn't feel totally it doesn't feel smooth um, and so it immediately just feels grainy through your force feedback wheel. Um, if you if you have it on uh, one you, with most of the sims, you'll feel that graininess. But two or three, and that graininess goes, and you still have very responsive force feedback. I tend to leave it on three, two or three, it doesn't really matter. Um, and a uh, happy days for me. Uh, so two or three on the uh, interpolation setting. F E I force feedback intensity overall overall force effect filter so what this does is it it filters the force feedback uh, in a way that smooth smooths the force feedback um i'm not sure exactly how it does it in terms of how it graphs the force feedback signal how it smooths it but what i have found is that with the fanatec wheelbases it's much better to run a lowish uh, int setting two or three and then on the FFB intensity, FEI intensity setting, sorry, the FEI setting, running that at uh, sort of 70, um, specifically 70 makes it feel really like you've got rubber tires. Like it, it gives it a really nice smooth rubbery feel while still getting a lot of information. It's not too raw and it's not too smooth. If you lower this down, it'll get smoother and smoother and it might feel a little bit laggy, a bit delayed. And if you have it high, again, you sort of get into sort of toothbrushy force feedback graininess territory. Um, 70 to me seems to be the sweet spot on this. And it's what I tend to run with uh, all the simulators, actually. I put it on around about 70. Um, that, uh, this 70 FEI and um, three on the int. I think will make most people very happy with the force feedback feel from this wheelbase those are the golden settings i would say so um those are the main settings outside of that we've got the uh, force effect setting um a lot of these settings at the end are uh, settings that are only used by games when you're parked or they're used by games that don't have force feedback so i keep this on on 100 the uh, spring effect um you could just turn it off if you want it because the games aren't using these dampener effect um i actually put on 100 so, uh, so as i say some sims like ac for example when you're parked it will then use the dampener effect to uh to make it so that there's damp there's like a load of dampening on the wheel and it gives you that sensation that you're you know you're, you're moving tires that are not moving so you're scrubbing the tires on the road whilst parked um if you turn it off the wheel goes totally loose you can see there um but yeah, you could have these turned off. You know, they, they're not really, they don't really come into effect whilst you're driving unless you're playing like um, an older simulator, generally. Um, brake level indicator. Uh, that's uh, the brake vibrator. If you've got uh, uh, brake, Fanatec brake pedals, you'll want to dial that into where you want it to start vibrating. That's going to be totally personal preference. Um, I'm using uh, Mecha Cup 1 pedals here with um, Sim Hub. Uh, <laughs> pucks on them so uh, watch my 150 pound motion rig if you want to see how I'm doing brake and uh, throttle pedal vibration because it's bloody good uh, the uh, shock and vibration is for the, uh, the the steering wheel motors that vibrate um, not all the Fanatec wheels have vibration motors in them the uh, most of the formula rims do uh, some of the podium podium uh, wheels do uh, but yeah, you just set that to whatever you want for where the wheel vibrates. It's, it's a very subtle vibration. 
it can be quite good for stuff like when it, uh, when you um, want it for like knowing that you're pushing the brake hard enough for it to lock up or the, all the wheels are locking up and what have you. Um, but I, I, I don't really, it's not a big thing for me. <laughs> so I don't really care about that setting. Um, and the multifunction positional switch, again, is just for the a positional switch uh, on some of the formula rims. You can choose to set that up to uh, encoder, constant, or pulse. Uh, it's going to depend on the specific settings. Well, for, for, for that, uh, for the for the MPS function and how to set that up and wheel rim stuff, just go and watch the Fanatec uh, videos that explain all those settings and why you'd want to do what you'd want to do for them. So <laughs> that's that's all the settings for for the for the wheel, um, and that's a a good baseline. Say so the main the main settings for the baseline are lowish force feedback initially. Uh, force feedback linearity off, natural dampener off, uh, NFR off, natural inertia off, force feedback interpolation on 2 or 3, FEI on 70, force effect on uh, 100, and the, others don't, the other settings don't matter. And then you should have what feels like absolutely uh, beautiful smooth and highly informative force feedback um i definitely find as well obviously you know certain simulators have better force feedback than others um in my opinion assetto corsa has by far the best force feedback in terms of uh, a balance between raw physics driving the force feedback the the sort of you're feeling what the car is doing as you would feel it literally as to what you'd feel in real life and also inf information in terms of you can really sort of feel the the tires subtly gaining and losing grip you can really feel sort of vibrations for the track surface and suspension movements and you can feel the loading of suspension uh through the steering so for uh, assetto course if you wanted to test a direct drive wheel out and you're like right what what sims like used to initially dial it in and get a feel for it and what's possible with a dd wheel um assetto corsa is probably a really good one to to go for um and what i would say as well is that you know some simulators just don't have very informative force feedback um acc is a good example and uh i racing with lots of its cars not all the cars in i racing but lots of its cars those two acc and lots of cars in i racing are really good examples of sims that just they don't give that much uh range of information through the force feedback they can be strong they can they can really help you catch the rear of the car and you can feel what the car's doing in many situations but those sims lack the dynamic subtlety that you will get in um, in R Factor 2 and uh, Assetto Corsa in particular. Uh, race Room is kind of in between those simulators in terms of uh, subtlety of force feedback. Um, and you might find as well, as you go from sim to sim, you might find that you, you know, you're happier running stronger force feedback in one sim than another sim. Um, and you also will probably find that you have to run, uh, if, if, if a certain simulator has much more um, snappy force feedback. As I see here this is settling really nice and naturally with the settings I've got here. Like this, there's nothing. There's a little bit of oscillation there when I let go, but the, you know the steering's not going absolutely crazy. It's it's very calm when you're actually holding onto the wheel and driving it. Everything's really sort of linked up and connected, and just it just makes sense. You'll get sudden jolts and bumps, but and the, the wheel pushes against you a little bit and you have to work with it a bit but there's nothing like crazy happening that's making it harder to drive at no point should your force feedback be making it harder to drive <laughs> if if that's happening uh you've probably done something wrong uh aside from if you were trying to simulate uh like a an f2 car or an indy car that has like 20 newton meters of force that is harder to drive not because there's craziness happening with the wheel but because 20 newton meters is a lot to uh to push against and work with that's physically hard but not not hard from a control uh, sense if that if that makes sense um but yeah, you know, if the steering's overacting in a given simulator, add add a bit of a natural pro damp, uh, NDP dampening to it. That will calm things down. 
uh, or just add the dampening in the sim as I say but right I mean to be honest we've rambled on here 18 minutes <laughs> I wanted this video to be as quick and as concise as possible I've probably failed miserably um, that that gives you a good baseline starting point for, for, the, for the settings those aren't the settings that I'm necessarily using with any particular sim um, I could drive perfectly happy with these settings I just drive that it feels bloody fantastic um, people will want to always change force feedback to what they want it to and they, they want settings that they want that's great that's part of the fun of the toy of a force feedback wheel some people will want to have so the uh, will want to have it so that the force feedback is very literal to the real car and maybe gives less information great good for you in which case you can increase the dampening and turn down the strength or whatever you want to do um, my philosophy on force feedback is because you feel no movement in a motion simulator um or in, a, in a static simulator and, and motion simulator typically aren't that good anyway but because you're not feeling g-forces i want to get as much information from the simulator before that information starts making the steering overactive and uh, gets in the way of the driving as much information without it being overactive is my is my personal goal <laughs> when it comes to dialing in force feedback for myself now um let me know in the comments if you'd like to i, I could go through the individual settings for each simulator the, the uh, force feedback settings that i happen to use i really don't want to do that <laughs> but uh, let me know in the comments if you would like specific settings for each sim maybe we can do that in the future these settings will, these settings will be fine <laughs> stop being lazy <laughs> but um yes you know remember that we've got a uh, review playlist if you want to see our other tip videos and reviews of equipment pedals steering wheels god knows what um subscribe and like if you haven't yet but uh, that that ladies and gentlemen mostly gentlemen uh is the end of this video thanks for taking the time to watch happy tea drinking and uh happy force feedback loving Till the next one, guys. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>